We live on Facebook. Hello, everybody. I'm just going to take a minute to start the recording on the computer. Hello, everyone. I'm Anila Lee on Christmas Eve. I'm joining you and thanking Diane Gonzalez from FBI, who's going to tell us about the scams that are going around about the vaccine, which we're really concerned about. We got an email. Uh, many of us on the board are FBI Citizens Academy alumni. So we got an email informing us about these scams and we are really concerned and we're going to be sharing that um, in Urdu at the end and Urdu Punjabi and Hindi. So stay tuned if you don't get it now, we're going to be, re re um, you know, we're going to be repeating it in Urdu Punjabi and Hindi at the end to tell you um, it's really important to be safe, not only safe uh, from germs, but it's also important uh, to be safe from these scammers that are out to get us in these very difficult times. So I want to thank Diane Gonzalez. Diane, first of all, happy Merry Christmas Eve. Thank you so much. And it's a pleasure to be here with all of you. And I'd like to wish you all the happiest of holidays and may they also be very safe. And thank that you so much. Thank you. And you make it safer for us. And I know it's Christmas Eve, so I'm not going to keep you um, that long. Although we're going to keep our doctors here long enough to answer everybody's questions. So with, without any um, further ado, Diane, can you tell us what are the scams that are going around about the, you know, the COVID-19 vaccine and how do we keep our communities and our, ourselves safe? Okay, here are a few of the things. And then what I will do is I'm going to send you a copy of the, uh, what we have published so that you can send it out to your community uh, representatives and members of who you'd like. And it's, it's to protect yourself COVID-19 vaccine scams, okay? Okay, and I'll, I'll be sure to um, share that with everybody on our page. Okay, and what it amounts to as the COVID-19 vaccine distribution begins, here are some of the signs and potential scams. You are asked to pay out of pocket to get a vaccine. You are asked to pay and put your name on a vaccine waiting list or to, get, or to get early access. Advertisements for vaccines through social media platforms, emails, telephone calls online, or from unsolicited unknown sources. Marketers are offering to sell or to ship doses of the vaccine for payment. Protect yourself. Do not give out your personal information to unknown sources. If you believe you have been a victim of the COVID-19 fraud, immediately report it to, and this is HHS-OIG hotline. This is a 1-800 number, dash HHS-tips, and tips-hhs.gov. Uh, the FBI hotline, which is 1-800-CALL-FBI or IC3.gov and the CS Media Care hotline. And the Medicare hotline is 1-800-MEDICARE. And there's some other uh, information, you know, of where you can get additional information. But what I want you to know is that basically the FBI, along with law enforcement partners, are, are raising awareness about the scams uh, and the frauds. And if you believe you, you or someone of, uh, that you know has been scammed, to please report it in to your local FBI office or the ic3.gov website. We're trying to do as much as we can. We've been getting you know all types of scams since this has started. People wanting to say, well, if you pay us, we'll get you in. And that's not true. We all have to wait our uh, time to be able to get in. Our hospitals are trying to do the best, but they're overloaded themselves. The vaccines themselves are going to the uh, first responders, which are our nurses, our doctors, and even our law enforcement is on a wait list. They're gonna see even with us when they can even get our law enforcement people in. Uh, to uh, to get the uh, vaccine. And of course the vaccine 
at this point right now is totally voluntary. If you want to take it, you can. If you don't, you don't have to. And that's basically right now what is taking place. I know that everybody's been getting emails. So the social media platforms also are coming out with some of this stuff and we have to be very careful. And the fact is that if you don't know who it is coming from, delete it immediately. Don't even respond to it. So Diane, are these scams coming in through email mostly? Should we be careful or are they on Facebook and are these other social They're also coming in through the social media platforms, you know, so that would be your Facebook, your, you know, uh, maybe a friend might say, oh, I, I ran across this, so they're going to send it to you, but they don't know who it's coming from. Remember that in your URL, you always look for that HTTPS, which is the sign that it excuse my dogs, <laughs> the doorbell is ringing, the dogs are barking. Uh, but that's that's basically, you wanna make sure it's a secure site or that it has a, a little um, lock on it. But even at that, you know, our, our people are very good at hijacking and looking at all of this, you know, the identity theft and everything that we all have to be very, very careful of. And we wanna make sure that, you know, we as, as protectors, you know, to our friends and so forth, we let them know that this, you just can't always be assured that this is an actual site. Yes, I think uh, that's most important to make sure that the site that you're going to is credible. And, and also Diane, don't you think it's a good idea to just um, ask a friend that you, you know, trust and, and before you go into a scam like this? You which, should. All right. You know, even even you can even ask your doctor or someone that you know in the in the medical field uh, if this is a reliable uh, source or uh, thing. I don't think basically it's going to really come from your from your doctors. You know, from people that you know and you work with. You know, the medical uh, field is what's going to be sending it out. The, you know, these things that are coming online right now is is uh, a way of basically trying to pull you in trying to get money from you trying to say oh we can get you in first and you and you there's no way you can get in first for a vaccine we all have to wait our our turn and we want to make sure that you know it's not a, a false vaccine also that somebody is trying to sell to you absolutely now diane do, do you know um how the vaccine has been stratified like who's getting it first it's only the the doctors and nurses Right now, from what I understood and what I've heard on the uh, from the news media, that basically it was our people in Congress, our president, our uh, elected president that's coming in. They are the first ones who are getting it. I know right now they say the nurses and the doctors because they are on the front line working with this uh, with the COVID in the hospitals. They are also getting the uh, vaccination, but you know like they said, it really is up to them. You know, it's all totally voluntarily uh, to them whether they want to get back, uh, get the vaccine or not. And then from there, they will try to get our law enforcement people like our um, firefighters, you know, people who are on the front lines and dealing with this all the time, they will be the next ones who will be responding. And the old people, my husband just popped his head in and said, and the old people, you know, <laughs> the 70 and older are senior citizens <laughs> and the people who are in the in, uh, residential living homes. Yes, I think it's important for them. Um, and we have a lot of people yeah. that we know who fall in that range and we'd want them to be safe. And right. And uh, basically when we say seniors, it's 75 and older, you know, because they have, uh, and the people who have the compromised immune systems. I know. And I think, um, there, is there a website where people go and can go and check? How there is a website here and it is going to be oig.hhs.gov and it's all lowercase backslash coronavirus is one. Okay, I got that. Okay, and it's all lowercase again, fbi.gov backslash coronavirus. All lowercase, justice.gov backslash coronavirus. 
and this is it'll give you additional information. Okay, we're going to be sharing all these websites once we're done with this webinar. We're going to be sharing everything that the FBI has to put out for states. Um, and do go to these websites. We want you to be informed, and the, the more informed you are, the less likely you are to be scammed by one of these, um, you know, scammers who are opportunists. Um, right. Um, one of our doctors and our board members, Dr. Sabine Malik, she's on the front lines um, fighting COVID. She's been informing our community from the very beginning. And I'm so thankful to her for her time because right now time is precious, uh, especially of our doctors and our law enforcement. So thank you, Diane, for sharing uh, your insights. You're insight. very welcome. And uh, Merry Christmas if you want to join your husband and, and the, you know, uh, the dogs are waiting for you, I know, then you're welcome to do that. We'll continue the conversation. About I'm going to continue to listen to what the doctor has to say. He oh. has... He has taken the dog so I can listen. <laughs> just, uh, I know it's Christmas Eve and, and uh, I just want to be cognizant and, and respectful of that. But I'm so happy that you're here. So if there are any questions, Sabine, we can also refer to our, uh, our dear friend Diane at the FBI. So Sabine, please introduce yourself. And I have a whole list of questions waiting for you. Oh, well, you know, the questions part, Dr. Chahal is going to deal with, you know, I can answer whatever, you know, um, we can start with, but uh, basically, you know, I just wanted to give like a brief introduction. So my name is Sabine Minib. I'm one of the board members for MBAC, and uh, we have been doing all these uh, webinars on COVID um, right from the beginning of the pandemic to the middle and, you know, how we have seen uh, the curve going down and then, you know, uh, spiking up again. And now the vaccine is here. So basically this webinar is all about vaccine since we have it now. So what, what, what are the um, expectations? Um, the biggest thing is safety of the vaccination and, you know, who should get it. Um, so all of those questions. Um, so I just wanted to give a little bit brief um, introduction, a small um, thing which I did at my work, a uh, small talk as well. Um, unfortunately, I cannot s share the slides because of it's um, very, um, uh, I work for corrections and you know the slides and everything we can't share. It's very, um, by law, we cannot share a lot of stuff from them, but you know, uh, since I was, I have had some contribution to that. So, you know, I can pull a lot of information from that. Um, it took us a while to make those slides and presentations. So um, whenever you are ready, Anila, I can begin with the uh, presentation or just the talk. Um, I would like you to totally take over. But before you do that, can you tell our viewers what, what you do? Because what you do is really important. And um, I think... <laughs> that way uh, we know what Muslim women are doing in America and yeah you, sure you please please elaborate a little bit on what you do okay all right so um, I am a family uh, board certified family medicine uh, doctor and getting trained in addiction medicine so I work for um, Department of uh, Correction um, it's called CCHS California Correction um, Health um, uh, services. And um, recently, it's not recent, but it's all, almost a year they developed this uh, program for addiction medicine in prison system because um, a lot of prisoners were still within the prison system are still addicted to drugs. So it's, it's a big network, you know, so um, and then uh, uh, our governor Newsom um, gave a big grant uh, and he actually um, he is the, you can call him the pioneer, or he took this big step and we are all very thankful to him for that. So, um, you know, so I'm in their central team. So there are 12 doctors in the central team. So we, we basically I'm practicing addiction medicine via uh, telehealth or telemedicine. So um, that's uh, one part of my job. And the other part of my job is um, as a primary care physician, um, I have my own private practice in Laguna Hills. Um, I used to work in Irvine, so a lot of people know me uh, with reference to Irvine, but now I'm in Laguna Hills. 
and uh, I practice primary care. Um, we, I do wellness, women health, uh, aesthetic medicine too. So um, I'm doing like two different spectrum in medicine. One is addiction, one is, um, you know, um, um, aesthetics now. With, and the goal is basically to feel better uh, at both ends, you know, um, aesthetically you feel better um, as well as, you know, with addiction. It's also about your well-being and be productive in the society. So um, the COVID spread is massive, huge, uh, especially, you know, correction system right now is affected tremendously. Um, a lot of inmates either have had it or, you know, uh, they are right now um, struggling with it. And so, and a lot of, um, not only prisoners, but also, you know, uh, frontline workers and um since we are all at risk. Um, so a lot of frontline workers, medical assistants, nurses, uh, custody staff, they were all affected. And so are the doctors in community. So you will um, soon, pretty soon, Dr. Sahal will join us. She's infectious disease um, with Hoag. So she is actually at the front lines. Um, so seeing whether she's seeing patients in the tents outside UCI or over at Hoag Hospital. So, um, you know, she has more idea um, the real battle, <laughs> battleground. So, you know, um, but you know, it's um, it's the this this was expected spike, but it is uh, huge at this time. And vaccine just came at the right time. I think uh, hopefully we will be able to curb it down a little bit. You know, at least first we have to get people. First, we have to get those um, uh, people protected who are who are out in the field trying to help others. You know are trying to, um, you know, um, treat uh, patients suffering with COVID. Um, and, you know, um, it's real, it's out there. We, these are, um, you know, we are in holidays. Holidays are, you know, it's time for celebration, but at the same time, we really have to be very careful. Today, I just heard a 28 year old um, uh, patient of mine dying of uh, COVID, no, um, comorbid conditions, only he wouldn't wear a mask. So, um, so these, and he, unfortunately he passed away in um, Florida and families here in California. So don't think that it's only gonna affect uh, older people or people with other comorbid illnesses. It can affect anybody and how, and um, this is how, you know, this is what we want to talk about, how the disease will affect you, you don't know. So um, be very careful, There's still all the precautions are there, wearing masks is there, be, like uh, social distancing is there, all of it is there. So, um, so I can start and then uh, actually Dr. Chahal, uh, she probably will be joining us um, um, around um, 6.50, I'm telling her if she can do that. Uh, I'll try to keep my presentation brief, but, but you know, um, um, let me just answer quickly. Okay. All right. So, um, Anina, do you have anything to add to, or should I just start with a little bit of brief description about the vaccine and, you know, all of that? Um, I'll ask you questions later, Dr. Sabine. I think that if you just start with your presentation, that would be great. And, and if, you know, at the end we have questions, I'll add them as I'm getting them on, from people on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so a lot of resources um, and, you know, with previous webinars, um, it, it, we always take um, um, uh, a lot of data from CDC and um, so a lot of, uh, uh, you know, there's a lot of information if you go to CDC website um, and, you know, you can, for vaccine, you can go to covid19.ca.gov-vaccines, which is a covid19 um, uh, vaccine uh, website dedicated by uh, state of California, uh, just to answer your questions. Um, and we can later on share it on our uh, MVAC page too. So what, again, talking about the same thing, what we know about COVID-19 that, you know, it's, um, it can range, it can result in any range of illnesses. You know, you can have mild symptoms, you can have severe symptoms and even death. So we don't know how COVID or SARS-CoV-2 will affect each person. So some people are more likely to be severely ill, like 65-year-olds, immune compromised, um, 
and with certain medical conditions. So um, if you have um, if you're if you have a chronic medical illness, um, or you know your doctors, your primary care doctors must have you know advise you special precautions. Um, so you know uh, those people are more likely to get sick. But again, like I just uh, shared with you guys today. I heard 28 year old um, young man dying of it, um, no comorbid conditions, um, just because he didn't wear a mask. So, so how do we prevent it? By going back to basics, wear a mask that cover your mouth and nose. Please cover your mouth and nose, noses included. <laughs> so uh, avoid uh, close contacts, stay at least six feet or two arms length from other people which a lot of people are not following. Um, you know, when you go to mall, you see that a lot. Um, so um, avoid touching your eyes, nose, mouth with unwashed hands, clean, disinfect um, surfaces, uh, wash hands with soap and water. Um, so if you're using an alcohol-based sanitizer, then it should have at least 60% alcohol in it. So um, statistics today um, uh, in California, we have, U.S. the death toll is um, 300 plus. I think it's 350 now. And uh, you know, um, with California, I can actually just pull it in here, like where. So we are about over 1.6 million and uh, 21 over 21,000 deaths in California, just in California. So, um, like I said, it's a huge spread. So, so what about the vaccine? Um, so vaccine is um, provided at no cost, which is a huge thing, you know, um, um, there is no cost. Anybody, when it's approved, it's approved. It, there is a tier based approval, like who will get it first, that's different. But then, you know, there is no cost to um, it to the patients. So it should be widely available uh, later in 2021 and, um, uh, it's validated by, uh, you know, um, all our nation's top medical experts um, about for its safety and efficacy. So, um, so the, there are multiple vaccines which are uh, in development um, and several of them are in phase three trial right now. So there are different trials um, or phases to vaccine. So phase one, two, three, four, you might have heard about all those phases. So um, phase one is, um, you know, where um, we talk about is, are there any side effects? You know, you, you get like two, 2,200 healthy volunteers. You, um, you know, uh, researchers try to answer these questions. Is this vaccine safe? There are any serious side effects? Um, uh, any dose related side effects and um, is the vaccine uh, causing an immune response means is it even effective or not? And then, you know, uh, phase two, several hundred um, uh, and, you know, volunteers and, uh, you know, in phase three, there are over 1000 volunteers and in phase four, uh, vaccine is approved. So a lot of other vaccines besides the two uh, vaccines that are just approved there are a lot of vaccines which are actually in uh, phase three trial right now. So um, the uh, FDA emergency use authorization, EUA, you might have heard about, or you might have listened to that word again and again and again um, on television too, is a process that helps facilitate the availability of the medicines and vaccines. EUA is in general for emergency vaccines and medications. Um, and it's more, uh, you know, you will hear more in uh, public health emergencies and crises such as current uh, pandemic COVID-19. So this vaccine is, uh, the vaccines are approved under, you know, EUA and, um, and they are actually being held the same safety standard as all the other vaccines. So um, let's see. So the two vaccines, which are, um, um, we, we just got approval, Pfizer, Bi BioNTech, BNT16, 2B2, which are two doses given at least 21 days apart. Uh, it got approved on, um, on December 11th. And Moderna is, um, the technical name is mRNA1273, two doses given at least 28 days apart. So both vaccines were tested 
um, um, in adults from diverse backgrounds and um, in all communities. Um, so the differences um, or safety numbers, uh, I'll just briefly go through it. Uh, Pfizer, where in Pfizer, um, there were 43,000, over 43,000 patients enrolled. Um, 39 US states participated, 13% Hispanic, 10 African American, six Asian, all included. And, and patients' ages were from 56 to 85. Moderna trial was on 30,000 patients, so um, a little bit less, but still significant number. 32 US states, similar kind of racial distribution. Um, and ages were 39% um, were 45 to 64, and 25% uh, were ages 65 and above. So age uh, variation is more in Moderna, where it was studied in all age groups versus Pfizer, which was mainly above uh, 56. So um, I have a question, Dr. Munib, about yeah. um, somebody is asking if mm -hmm. they take the first dose, do they have to take the second? Pfizer, I believe, is the one that we're going to be getting in the US. So um, they're asking, do we have to take the second dose? Yes. Um, and I'll go through it, why, how the vaccine works. We'll talk about it. Uh, but you know, they both will be available. Um, um, actually, Pfizer, a lot of states are running out. Um, so it's uh, Moderna is uh, going to be available soon. So, um, so what kind of vaccine is it? It's messenger RNA vaccine. So what it does is, um, uh, so talking about the effectiveness first, um, the Pfizer is 95% effective, Moderna is 94.5% effective, 94.5% effective, so it's very close. Um, and then, you know, um, how long are we going to be protected from it? It's not known. So um, we know about the efficacy, but we don't know, like, for how long it would last. And the second thing is, uh, as I said, uh, it's a messenger RNA vaccine, so how does it work? So um, 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 there, so how these vaccines work is that messenger RNA actually, um, so we call the first dose is actually going to prime, which means messenger RNA is going to go inside a cell and it will, um, you know, prime it. It will, um, it, um, uh, what, it, so it, it, it makes harmless piece of spike um, it's, it's called a spike in protein. So what it will do, is it will go inside the cell and make some protein. Uh, the cell will make a spike of proteins, which is basically priming your immune system. So, um, and when, you know, these, this, uh, your, the, your cell is exposed to COVID virus, uh, the cell will present this, uh, you know, uh, spike of protein to COVID virus to fight it. So the first step is priming. And the second step is, you know, uh, where, you know, you will actually boost the immunity and multiply all of this spike. So, um, so the first, like I said, priming and then, you know, triggering the rest of the immune response. So both, both doses are necessary. So uh, that's how it, it is going to be administered and that's how it is, how, how it is going to be efficacy. So, um, it does not affect our cell DNA in any way. So, and it does not have the virus in it. So that is something to remember. Anything that would not alter our cell DNA, you know, is safe. Um, and also, you know, it's not going to, um, uh, like, said, I, like I said, it does not have the virus in it. It's not the virus inject, getting injected in your body. So um, side, there will be side effects. There are side effects. Anytime you get anything with messenger RNA, there, there are side effects, which can be with, even with flu vaccine, we sometimes can get. Um, so, but uh, these side effects can be severe um, in certain individuals. But, you know, uh, the, the common side effects reported are fever, headaches, muscle aches. Um, in clinical trials, there were no significant um, concerns. Um, and the safety data was gathered over eight weeks um, after, you know, um, patients receiving the vaccine. So, um, and then again, going back to safety, um, before authorization, FDA carefully reviewed it. Um, uh, CDC and FDA are closely monitoring the uh, vaccine safety and the side effects. 
And uh, there are two governing bodies for vaccination, the FDA and ACIP. Uh, they both, um, you know, um, review all the safety data before, you know, the vaccine is approved and recommended for usage. So, um, um, so for us, uh, over California in itself, you ha we have a scientific safety review work group. Um, it is joined by a few other states, uh, Washington, Oregon, Nevada. So um, the 11 member work group um, worked with uh, some representative from those states and, it, and then you know, it was approved or we received the seal of approval for vaccine safety and effectiveness. Um, so, um, I mean, it's so California, you know, it's, we, <laughs> we are a little bit more particular. So, um, so all of it is, you know, very closely being monitored as well. So, um, um, so who should get it? So not right now, you know, there is a tier based criteria. Like I said, um, uh, why healthcare, healthcare professionals are a priority at this time? Because one, yes, we are on the front line. Second, if we get infected, we can transmit it to other people. So that's why we are, again, we are a uh, priority. And then, you know, um, again, we can positively influence vaccination to see and making. Um, I mean, if I will get vaccine, um, I can, uh, you know, recommend that you also get the vaccine. Um, so, and we all need to get it. Um, we need at least 60% of the people in the community to get immunized, you know, so to, to get rid of COVID. So um, that's why, you know, uh, we have this role to play. And uh, also we need to stay safe uh, so we don't spread it to other people. So, um, um, so, uh, <clears throat> so next, um, what to expect when you go and get the vaccine? So um, you have to be, uh, and I just found it uh, today because you know I was trying to get the vaccine for some of my patients, not right now, but you know down the road, uh, we have to prepare ahead. So you have to be California vaccine, you have to be approved of, as a California vaccine provider, uh, which means that you know um, there are certain uh, forms and criteria that we need to fulfill in order for us to be the vaccine provider, especially for COVID. Um, so um, when you go, to, when you, uh, when you will, when it's for it, when it's your time to go and get the vaccine, uh, your providers, you know, they will, uh, you will have, you will call them, uh, you know, and make appointments and they will send you some information on the vaccine. There are some screening forms that you might receive from your providers. Um, so um, you would have to fill those forms, you know, you would have to agree to getting the vaccine. You will uh, receive, uh, you know, notification on, you know, the side effect of the vaccine, what to expect the day you receive the vaccine. So um, uh, we, we are all, um, as a healthcare provider, we are all, uh, uh, you know, um, bound to report any side effects to something called VAERS, V-A-E-I-R-S, which is vaccine adverse uh, effects um, reporting system. So, uh, and actually I, I just enrolled it and I have it now on my cell phone, you know, in case um, if there is any reported side effect to any vaccine, not even COVID, any vaccine, we have to report it to them. So um, again, you know, um, um, the vaccine, um, what what I always tell my patients about a uh, flu shot is, you know, they, they ask me if they should get it. And uh, I'm very neutral about uh, vaccinations. It's your personal decision. But, you know, and this is something uh, uh, which is public health crisis. So, you know, we have to be all be very, um, you know, proactive about this. So, uh, uh, like I said, like for flu, flu vaccine, um, it's a uh, it's uh, derived from the virus. This vaccine is not uh, actually virus. So it's basically stimulating your immunity. So um, a good immune response can, even if you get COVID, you won't die from it. And that's what I always tell patients uh, who are high risk with flu, that if even if you get flu, your body is in a better shape to fight the infection, you won't die from it. So um, just keep those things in mind. Um, Again, uh, vaccination is one year. We still have to uh, use masks, uh, maintain social distancing, clean and disinfect, wash our hands. 
Um, those are the CDC recommendations and they don't change. Um, okay, so again, there is one question, actually, it's somebody asked me that's this question the other day um, and was a healthcare provider, you know, who got the vaccine. So vaccine will not cause you to test positive on COVID-19 virus test. Say you got the vaccine today and uh, 10 days afterwards, you got exposure and now you need to get tested. So this vaccine is not going to alter your test, uh, except if you are getting the test done in your blood, which actually it's checked for immunity or antibodies, that could be positive uh, if you have received vaccine, which, you know, which will tell you that the vaccine is actually working and you are actually getting uh, or developing an immune response. Um, so um, that was one question which actually somebody asked me. So. Um, uh, and then people who already had COVID, they will still benefit from the vaccine. So um, they, they might be advised by their providers to receive it because you know, the more, uh, because we don't know like uh, for how long will you have immunity? I have had a patient who had COVID in June, his uh, antibody test is coming back negative because he just wanted to make sure that if he has antibodies then he doesn't go and get the vaccine, but no he doesn't have antibodies or protection anymore. So he will be getting the vaccine. So we don't know like how much long the immunity would last, even if you had infection or with, even with the vaccine, we don't know yet, like for how long you're gonna be immune. So um, again, safety is very monitored. You know, um, we these are all uh, very, uh, you know, uh, FDA is monitoring it. Um, CDC is monitoring it. So, uh, so what, like I said, what do you expect during and after vaccination? Uh, before you learn about the vaccine, like I said, CDC has a lot of um, good resources. During read the facts that the, so when you go to your provider office, they will give you a sheet. And that's what I was actually looking at that the hospitals are giving, you know, to providers or healthcare uh, workers, you get a sheet um, which is all the information, pertinent information that you need to know. Afterwards, um, you would have to wait in the waiting area for 30 minutes to see any side effects. Uh, we are getting prepared to have emergency, um, you know, um, kits ready in case if you have had any kind of severe reaction, which is not reported. But you know, um, as a, like I said, as a California vaccination. California vaccine provider, I have to have that in my office uh, if I'm going to be administering vaccine, and which I which we all have in general. But you know, we are keeping some extra epipens or you know things like that just in case something happens, and then you know immediately report um, the, it to the VR system, uh, uh, which I uh, mentioned before. And um, I mean get vaccinated, please go to CDC websites. There are a lot of good resources. Um, you know, um, you can have some side effects of 48 hours uh, afterwards, but afterwards you shouldn't be getting any um, side effects. And that's what mo most of the people are reporting. Um, a lot of people don't develop fever, um, body aches, flu-like symptoms, they last for 48 hours and afterwards, you know, they resolve. So, um, like I said, the vaccine is considered safe. We are all getting it. I was myself biased because I am immune compromised in, the, in a way because I have a medical condition, but I will go ahead and do it um, because it's important. Um, I, I feel it's my responsibility as a provider um, and as a community member to uh, you know, help in whatever way I can. So if it will help us all to get there, um, I will do it and, and we should all do it. Um, so I think in a couple of minutes, we will have Dr. Jahal, she will join us um, for any questions. And uh, um, so we are in phase one, healthcare per, uh, personnel, resident in long-term care facilities. So a lot of us are getting vaccinated already. And, you know, after Christmas, um, long-term facilities, a lot of them will be, um, you know, um, getting immunized and then, you know, and the tier criteria, um, you know, um, is, is there at CDC website too. And then your healthcare provider can basically explain it to you better. 
So um, I had a, this question, I think, from one of our board member, Rana, yesterday, because she was telling me she gets severe uh, reaction or allergies. So again, uh, you can still get the, this vaccine, but you know, um, your, uh, wherever you will get the vaccine, you just have to inform them that you are allergic to certain things. Um, and you know, most of us are prepared for any kind of um, response. Hopefully, it won't happen. <laughs> okay. All right. Over to you, Anila. So, so it's safe to it's safe. with allergies to get the virus. They should be okay. It doesn't matter what age. Yes. Okay. There's a lot of information, misinformation going around that if you have allergies, you're gonna you can have this reaction, and people are talking about it. So. I'm glad that you um, highlighted that. Um, and for also um, seniors that are watching, if you have allergies, it's safe to get this vaccine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh. Did you ask me a question? I was actually trying to find out something here for it. Mm -hmm. I was thinking maybe Dr. Your um, presentation, if if you have to finish before Dr. Chahal. Uh, no, I'm I'm actually done. Um, so yeah, so I mean, there is there are more logistics which I don't think like um, um, we. So everybody knows by now that you know Pfizer needs to be frozen and Moderna can use regular freezer freezer and it's stable in refrigerator for thirty days. Um, so the first shipment for Moderna is. Actually, the date is today, so 12, 23 to 25, you know, they are uh, shipping it. Um, so um, actually, I think for me, it's going to be Moderna. It's not going to be Pfizer because a lot of states are running out of Pfizer already. Um, when do you think anticipate, when do you anticipate getting it in California? What you need? For myself? Yes. So for myself? Well, you know, um, I will be vaccinated um, in next two, three days. Okay. Uh, but uh, do you know what order they're going to come in? Like who in, uh, as in career-wise, professionally? Um, Diane, you can join the conversation if you like. Um, another thing that we're all wondering is who is going to get this first? Is it going to be, so we, we establish it's going to be doctors and healthcare providers in the first first batch. Um, right, so that's what the criteria is. The AC, ACIP has, uh, you know, divided. Um, so we are one, so there are like uh, uh, tier one, um, tier two, uh, tier one is healthcare professionals. Tier two, so, and it's uh, further divided into A and B, you know, so A is healthcare professionals on the front line. And then, you know, there are healthcare professionals who are in the right back line. So, and then, you know, one, one B is uh, people who are in uh, long-term care facilities, uh, prison system, um, um, you know, all of those uh, uh, patients will, are the second one to get. But we are hoping that tier one will be done like beginning January, like it shouldn't take long um, because um, the vaccine, you know, it's, it, it's, it, it's, the, the doses are coming, you know, they are rapidly producing it and shipping it. So hopefully we are hoping, you know, that we will be done um, in, in the beginning of January, like first couple of weeks. Um, okay. So, um, and then uh, let's see. Um, uh, I can pull the criteria because it's, um, I was looking at it. So I think uh, in for general public, it should be available sometime, you know, April, um, people who are now who are healthy and they want to be vaccinated, I think sometime in April, May, it should be available. Okay, so that's when we should expect it. Yeah, yeah. And you know, again, if you're immune compromised or high on the tier, so you will definitely get it earlier. So um, they are actually hoping to get everybody vaccinated by April. So I, I hope that's the case, you know. Uh, another senior is asking how will she know when to come um i mean i think what uh, their concern is how will they know it's their turn and they can get a vaccine because uh, you know a lot of seniors are not going to their doctors they're staying at home yeah so mm -hmm. how will they know in other words like who's going to call them their doctor or who 
Okay, so they need to check with their uh, providers, you know, and then um, uh, like for, I can tell as for myself, you know, um, when, um, when I get approved as California provider, you know, I will tell my patients, you know, that, um, you know, we are administering vaccine and, um, you know, uh, which tier, um, you know, we are administering. So, um, I mean, I have a lot of patients who are themselves very proactive. They are, if they're immune compromised, they're already asking me because, you know, um, it gets a little bit tricky when insurance plans are involved, although it is free, but, you know, um, still, uh, like vaccine administration, all of that needs to come through insurance plans and how they will make it available for uh, some of the HMO plans for their seniors, you know, how they will make it available uh, to the providers to give it to them, you know, if they're not part of a bigger healthcare system, then, you know, um, uh, it's, uh, <clears throat> it's gonna be coming actually from the providers. So they need to be proactive, they need to check with their doctors, you know, and then, um, uh, if they are not able to get it from their doctor's office, then the doctor should be able to guide them like where to go and where to get it from. Um, I mean, I have had some community doctors asking me and you know, I just called Orange County Department of Public Health. So they will also be getting your local public health um, authority, you know, they will also be getting the vaccines. Um, but, um, you know, and they will administer it based on tier as well. So um, like I said, uh, you are not going to your doctor, but you know you can always communicate with them, call them, ask them. You know, exactly. right now it's um, uh, it's very ad it's ad it's being advertised all over on the television. So you know you will know uh, a little bit. You will have idea when to. Uh, I think a lot of our seniors watch uh, uh, different uh, you know the language uh, ethnic channels. So we want to make sure that they know that they need to call their doctor and get on the list or let them know that they want to be vaccinated when it comes. They want to be included. Yeah. So yeah. advice to all the seniors watching us, can you make sure you call your doctor? Please do that so that you can get um, We're really honored to be joined by our, our doctor on the front line, our COVID hero, Dr. Uh, Puneet Chahal. Uh, Dr. Muniba, I'm going to let you introduce her. And, um, and then we have tons of questions waiting for you. So Dr. Chahal is a good friend of mine and I'm very thankful to her because she, she is so busy and I asked her for a few minutes um, because we wanted to do this and, um, and given the timing of uh, how the vaccine came and you know we are seeing and she is seeing so many patients. So she is an infectious disease doctor. Uh, she has been with us before. Uh, talking about uh, COVID spread and, you know, uh, we didn't talk about the vaccine. So, and Dr. Chahal just, I actually can't see her. I don't know where is she. Um, um, well, she's here. <laughs> I'm here. Hi. Oh, okay. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Hello. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I'm in scrubs. I'm here. Uh, thank you for having me. Yeah. So there are a lot of questions. So I just gave the brief description before you, like what is the vaccine? And you know, um, a lot of patients are, like a lot of people are asking questions, but we, we give the description, like it's FDA approved doses and what, how it works, the safety of it. And you know, we I kept questions for you. It was the harder part for you. Sure. But how are you feeling? You received your first dose. So yes, I received my first dose last week. I could not wait. I think it's so amazing. Um, I have to be thankful for all the scientists who were behind this. Um, it was made in record time, but no problems with safety. Everything was studied very carefully. I think what 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 you know what usually is done when you have a problem like this, either you can give it a lot of time or a lot of money, and a lot of money was involved, and that helped develop these vaccines at speed time and it couldn't have come sooner. So many people, so many people, it's just heartbreaking. They're dying every day. And I'm, I'm just glad this has started and I hope people will have enough confidence and we intend to build confidence so they will uh, go ahead and get this vaccine and will not have any hesitancy at all. Um, no, I personally got it last week, Thursday, no side effects, mild arm soreness, I had about maybe 20, 30 colleagues right close by while we were getting the vaccine. 
nobody had any problems. We went back to work uh, the same day, the next day. So um, overall, there might have been some reported cases and, you know, of side effects. Everything is always studied in detail to make sure that it's vaccine related. Uh, but so far, nothing, nothing uh, adverse has been reported, you know. Thank you so much for um, making sure that we all understand that a lot of money was put into this. Um, it would have taken us years to put money, raise money for research for something like this. This happened because everyone wanted to get rid of the pandemic. Am I right in saying that, Dr. Chahal? Uh, absolutely. So, you know, the various processes that happen in research and Dr. Mani would be familiar when we, when we were in training, it takes forever to find funding to do what you want to do. So that is a big, big limiting factor. And that was taken care of. Um, and we had a head start because we did deal with a similar SARS coronavirus previously. So there was some headway there. Uh, this technology was just waiting. It was waiting for something to be used, with, you know, some disease where they could apply this new technology, the mRNA technology, which is, which is amazing, you know, how unique it is and how efficient it is. It's literally like sending an email to your immune system and saying, do this, and then the actual mRNA disappears from your body. You have no trace of it. It doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't sit in your DNA. It's not stored anywhere. So I think that that's just amazing. Dr. Chahal, when you got the vaccine at that moment, did you feel anything? Did you get a, a, a you know sore arm? Where did you get it? Where did they put the vaccine? Uh, well, yes, I got it right here on my left arm. Mild soreness, I would I would say with any, but actually very much milder than uh, you know even a flu shot. I think the only thing I felt was uh, was just the emotion of it, of you know where we are at and how quickly this was developed. Okay, um, should I go with the question, Dr. Muneeb, or are you going to- Yes, yes, please go ahead. I'm just thinking, I like it. That's a true scientist. Dr. Chahal is true scientist at her heart. So, <laughs> you know what I love, uh, Dr. Chahal? I love your enthusiasm. You are sounding and looking so positive. That's what we need to see. Yeah. Because there's, you know, going into 2021, we cannot, we cannot take the, the pessimism of 2020 with us. Yeah. And, and I want to see more of you and maybe I'll highlight your face. <laughs> we all have hope. We need to do that. Yeah. Uh, Diane, we need that hope that things are gonna get better. And with that, I have a tough question. So people are saying, even if you get the vaccine, it's not gonna be safe and you have to, um, ha it won't stop the pandemic. Now, is that a myth? Is that misinformation? Can you counter that? Yeah, so it's, you know, it is a little bit of misinformation or information that is twisted a bit. Uh, so in reality, when a vaccine is developed, they only are looking at does it stop disease in the person getting the vaccine? So if you got the vaccine, did you get COVID? And they found that, no, it was very effective, 95% up to so it didn't now the second question is okay you did not get COVID but is it possible that you get a mild case and you're asymptomatic and you're still able to transmit it to another person despite the vaccine if you're transmitting to other people is that going to be an issue so that question is unanswered that's the truthful answer but at the same time being uh, being a scientist, everything is studied before it's declared. So they will look into this answer. They will look into this question, you know, how good is it at preventing asymptomatic transmission? Meaning you don't feel the infection, but you somehow transmit it to somebody else. So that part is being looked into. But in all reality, as most vaccines previously, when you don't get sick, when you don't get the disease yourself, obviously you're not gonna transmit it to a lot of people to transmit it to other people. So, you know, number one, that's, I think I hold on to that hope that because it's so good, you know, 95% effective, there are not a lot of vaccines out there that are this good. So that gives me hope that it will definitely, um, you know, bring this, this really horrible year to an end and this pandemic to an end soon. Uh, it will modify it fairly quickly. You know, hopefully by March, we'll have a lot more people vaccinated and we'll see some results um, exactly see how well it's controlling the pandemic. 
Okay. So for a reference, I'm going to interrupt here. The flu shot that we get, our flu vaccine is between 60 to 80 percent effective most of the times. If they get even mm -hmm. less, sometimes even less. You know, some some years because the flu virus changes a lot every year. Sometimes mm -hmm. even it's you know 50 percent effective, and it still helps a lot. So mm -hmm. so um you know for me a 95 percent effective vaccine is like you know something like, like the uh, vaccine for uh, for Zoster or for chickenpox, you know, that's a very effective vaccine. Vaccine for meningitis is very effective. And we don't see a lot of that because th those are effective vaccines. So the only, I think the only 100% effective vaccine is like, you know, the measles vaccine or something like that. So it's all, it's, see, the vaccine is, is the vaccinations that are going to make a difference. If most people get vaccinated and agree to get vaccinated, we'll have so many people vaccinated, you know, up to 70%. The virus won't have anywhere to go and it'll be gone so that's that's the key is to get vaccinated that sounds good i think we should all get vaccinated um i didn't know that the flu vaccine was not as effective um and and it was only 65 percent. is that what you said dr Mani? Between the, you know, in a good, very good strain, they say like it's, it can go up to 80%, which is like good year. Most of the time it's 60%. You know, that's where average, um, you know, every year we fall around like 60%. I'm sorry, I should share it. I'm your doctor. I should share it with you. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, but, but, you know, I, I can, can I add, it's not, you know, the, to get, yes, it's 60% effective to prevent flu, but it's, it's very effective to prevent severe flu. So even if you get, you get a milder case. I always say that because I know when some, when everybody here is like, oh, it's only 50 or 60% effective, why do I take it? And I'm like, well, you know, for, you won't get sick enough to go to the hospital. Here. Yeah, I just shared it with them that, you know, it's, it's very, like, if you will get flu, I tell patients that at least you won't die from it. And so is with COVID, you know, you will, you might get COVID, but you won't die from it, you know? Yeah, yeah. So that's really important for us to know. And then is it going to be long-term protection if we get the vaccine or is it going to be short-term lasting us for maybe one or two years like the flu vaccine? Okay, so um, so far we know that this virus doesn't change as much as the flu virus. It's been pretty stable. Now you might have heard in the news there's a new strain in the UK and uh, South Africa in fact has a new strain as well they're dealing with. We don't know yet if those strains are going to be a problem. See every virus it's its natural uh, tendency or natural history is to become less deadly and more infectious because that's how it survives. So it's going to happen and it's going to change, but so far it looks like it's not changing rapidly. And this vaccine, the current vaccines that we have that are approved under the emergency authorization, the Pfizer and Moderna, they are being studied against the new strains. And uh, I mean, whatever prelim reports I've seen that they seem effective, uh, they're, they're working. So yet to be seen about how long or how durable the response is. Like if once you get vaccinated, is it for life or for a year or will you need a booster every year? Uh, unsure. So right now, most likely there will be some form of booster needed, maybe in two years, maybe you know further down. And hopefully uh, by that time, it will be such a minor problem. It won't even be, you know, we'll, we'll be uh, kind of uh, not even thinking about it, but uh, it's possible that the, the vaccine immunity may not last for life, but it might, might last for years. And even, even infection immunity, immunity with infection, we, we're seeing last you know, pretty good duration. So vaccine immunity is always better. So it will definitely be more durable and uh, you know, more helpful to us. Okay, and then... Um... Another question was, when do we expect to get it? Um, Dr. Muneeb answered that a little bit. Um, but I think some something that um, I've been hearing and watching on Facebook is what you just mentioned, that UK has got another shutdown and countries like our country, uh, the US is, is asking to watch the travelers and maybe close the, the travel to the UK. But you and I know that a lot of the um, immigrant communities were going back and forth, Pakistan, India, Bangladesh, and there are a lot of UK travelers that are in these countries. So what is the update on that strain? And then how do we make sure that we uh, keep our families safe if we have family? Um, I think 
a lot of us know families in, in the UK who have, I just spoke to somebody who's got three family members uh, uh, with COVID. Um, so how do we, uh, you know, protect ourselves from that traveling as we travel during the holidays as well? And is it true that ball policy uh, can occur with the vaccine? That's a big concern, um, especially in the seniors, uh, in the immigrant community as well. People are asking, can they get ball policy? Bell's policy. Bell's policy. Yeah, I, I, I understand that concern. Again, again, it was, you know, sort of uh, mentioned and it was one of the side, one of, I wouldn't even say side effects. It was one of the things they noticed, uh, but the incidents, meaning how many cases they noticed of Bell's palsy in this trial were not more than what's usually expected. So it's something, Bell's palsy is like a neurological condition of in, in your facial nerve, which actually happens on its own in a lot of people for various reasons. So it's not because of this vaccine. That those cases just happen, happen to happen in a person who got the vaccine, not because of the vaccine. In fact, so far we haven't seen any neurological problems with this vaccine. Nothing, you know. And that was something that we were really scrutinizing. They were scrutinizing that in detail, and they will continue to. And uh, uh, it's. I think it's it's amazing that no, so far they've only been the four cases that are reported are within the limits of normal. Like we, we would probably see that in a general population that was not even vaccinated. Oh, okay, and, um, and then the other question was, how do we uh, make sure that we're safe when we are traveling as well? Because a lot of people are going back. Yeah, that's, that, is, that is, you know, again, uh, it's a little curveball. Like the, I always say, 2020 doesn't want to go easy. So, uh, we have this new information. We don't know everything about it. So for me to say, you know, the, this is certainly a new strain, it's more deadly. No, it's not the case. We just know it's a new strain and we know it's a little more infectious or significantly more infectious, meaning it easily travels from person to person. Uh, but so far they have not reported that it is causing people to get sicker. So that's, that's a little bit of a positive news. But regarding travel, um, I've always, you know, if it's avoidable, it has, it's the best, but I know a lot of family and there's, there is, but just the same precautions you would take, just be extra careful with masking and washing your hands and using sanitizer and cleaning and all of that. And when you're traveling or if you have to travel, you know, the same when you go somewhere, when you come back, you know, think about quarantining. Uh, and just watching yourself before you go mingle with others. Okay, somebody is asking, are we going to run out of the vaccine? Oh, that's unlikely. When we have uh, plans for a lot more doses, it's, you know, there's only a certain amount that can be made in a certain amount of time. So we've got, now we've got two types of vaccines and they're going to come. And then we have more in the pipeline. So there's more types of vaccine that are being developed. So we will never, I don't think we'll have a shortage, but the shortage is based on, you know, where you live. Look at, look at how um, a country that can buy the vaccine and spend the money will get it first and some countries won't. That definitely inequalities will happen and delays will happen. But uh, the intention is to develop enough vaccine for, for everybody who wants it. So I'm not, I'm not at all concerned about that. I'm more concerned about people not trusting the vaccine. So I, would, I always want to reemphasize the safety and, and you know, this, is, this is just the most amazing silver bullet that is going to get this to end somewhat. Um, and, and this goes to Diane as well. Diane is with the FBI and um, FBI has warned us about um, vaccine scans, that they, there's a vaccine. And, um, somebody just messaged that there's a Chinese vaccine there and it's available. If they get it, if, if they're not getting it now, can and they get it, they have a chance to get it in, in India or Pakistan or China, can they get it? And will it be effective? That I can't even answer because I don't know. I mean, I would trust the ones here in the States, but I don't know in a foreign country, you know, they, they haven't come up with any statistics yet you know i haven't seen anything i haven't read anything on statistics so i wouldn't trust it 
to tell you the truth. Doctors, I'm going to put this back on you. And what is your thought in regards to that? I, you know, I think it's, it's uh, very, very difficult to believe something just based on a statement. Again, I like you have mentioned, we need to see data and statistics and see the details. Where was it studied? Was it studied? How many people? What? I know there are at least three Chinese vaccines. There's the Russian vaccine. And you know, we just need more information. I, I can tell you what they're made of. And you know, there's, they're not as robust uh, with the type of technology they use. But um, it, you know, it could still be a useful vaccine. But we don't have any details. And we definitely want to stay away from any kind of advertising which says, I can get you the vaccine for this much, or you know, this is available. We want to stay with the mainstream in this case, definitely. Right, and then Dr. Chahal, how does it work in the body? Okay, so it's it's like a the the co main component of the vaccine is something called a messenger RNA. So the virus is is basically just just like humans, we have DNA, which is like our code, basically our code to make everything and function. The viruses have something called RNA. So this vaccine takes a RNA code, a part of their code that codes for the envelope of the virus, the outer layer of the virus. And once it gets that code into your body, it's basically like sending instructions like here, this is what the virus envelope looks like, make antibodies against it. And that's what the body does. And the instructions itself are dissolved out. Our body doesn't keep those instructions, but the, the messenger RNA has given its message and the body makes antibodies and stores those you know, for a future. If ever you're infected, it's like, boom, they're activated and they get the virus. Okay, so um, there's a scare in the community going around that it's gonna be live COVID virus. You're gonna be injected with live COVID virus. That is a myth, right? Yes, so this is not live not it's actually far away from being live as possible it's a part of the code of the virus you know it's not the complete virus first of all it's a small part the complete virus is made of you know the genetic material the rna and then it has coats on it and you know all the structures so we're not using any of that we're just using a very small portion of the code which is generated in the lab and that's it there's no virus that is grown anywhere or is injected in you at all. Um, this vaccine is new, it's new technology and I can understand people's apprehensions, but it's technology that was being studied for decades. There were people you know, just waiting to use it. They were studying it for other vaccines, just didn't have the, you know, the, the incentive to, to push for it until this, this uh, came up and it was the right fit. Okay, so, and what um, treatment if somebody does get it? Um, um, what's the treatment for it? I guess they're asking. Of treatment for uh, if they get the virus. What is right now updated? Uh, okay, the updated treatments. Um, you know, not not a lot has changed. So since say in summer from now, we we know just a few things about the virus in terms of treatment. You know, steroids are very helpful in very sick patients. There's one antiviral drug, which is not so amazing, but somewhat helpful. Plasma therapy is still being used. Again, we have found that it's not very helpful. The two types of new treatments that have, uh, that I think have a lot of potential and are just starting up are actually, one is the antibody cocktail treatment, which is, which is basically making a lot of the same antibody your body would make against this virus. And injecting into you. Uh, it's called Regeneron or Bamla. And then there's another anti-inflammatory drug. So right now the, the treatment for the virus is, you know, it's harder to, to develop and the concentration is on preventing. And even the medication, the new medication I'm talking about, the antibody cocktail is supposed to be given very early. So you don't get really sick from the virus, but that's the latest and it's actually very, very uh, useful, I think. It will be very, very useful as well. Okay, so that's good to hear. And then um, 
Can you think of any other questions, Dr. Muneeb, Daya? No, actually, we just got Dr. I told her it's going to be 15 to 20 minutes. So we, we have it because she's I don't know. Yeah, this is That's okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, no, I just want to wind it up. And then, you know, there were a lot of questions, you know, and um, you can always post uh, uh, questions at our website. Um, if I'm not able to answer, I just will ask Dr. Chahal and I ask her, text her at least two or three times a week <laughs> with all I <laughs> with questions too. So and it's, um, we are very thankful to you because, you know, you, I, I think you just came back from work and uh, you're sitting here. So <laughs> well, we would let you go I'm, to your family. You know, thank and, you. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Thank you. Stay safe, everyone. And, uh, and uh, we shall get through this. <laughs> thank you for your okay. information. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you all. So we'll, we're going to um, thank you, Diane. Thank you, Dr. Chahal. And Sabine and I uh, beg leave everybody. Have a safe Christmas holiday, whatever you're celebrating. And we will see you. Amrak is going to see you on New Year's Eve. So join us then. But that will be more fun uh, <laughs> on Zoom. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Happy holidays. Bye. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks.